tells me that this episode is going to strike a similar situation for us Aussie bronies. I have seen TV shows where the story was a bit out of this world and I almost lost my lunch. I have seen a town wiped out by a nuclear warhead in the 1983 film The Day After in a year 9 science class and had a near death encounter when I was asleep. I have been through heck and back and lived to tell the tale. Over the last four seasons of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, I have seen the memorable moments that have made me cheer, the emotional scenes which have caused me to hug my pony plushies, I got angry over a certain pony who hawked up, and I got criticised for not liking Flutterhawk, and I also threw an HD TV out the window over Discord in the Season 2 premiere. Don't worry, it was an Audi-based TV, and at the time it was pretty expensive, so I didn't go ahead with it. <laughs> Now this may sound far-fetched in a pipe dream, but all of this is actually true. This show takes you on a roller coaster ride and each episode is unpredictable in terms of emotions. So when the fifth season premiere went to air this morning, let's say I almost or ended up losing my dinner. Now this is not in a I hate this episode and everything in it sort of way, but let's provoke some anxiety, PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder and stress. Village and General Colts, this is the Cutie Map, or Cutie Markless, as it was previously known. Twilight's New Home. Twilight's Castle, a year later. We open the episode with a look at Twilight Sparkle's new home. A castle of her very own to replace the written off tree berry which was destroyed in the battle with t -Rex in the Season 4 Grand Final. The insurance company must have been pretty generous towards Twilight and giving her a new home and the inside of the castle is digged out with the latest technology. Each of the main six has a seat at the Hall of Power, just like an Australian Parliament, except, <laughs> except you don't have the idiots running the show. And when their cutie marks flash, we see the map of Equestria, in real time of course. Now this leads us to the first adventure of the season, and one that almost they didn't come back from. The village of equality. Not that equality, but bad equality. So we open with a road trip and now they come across a village. What will happen next? For those who have seen the previews before the episode aired, there are many questions that were asked. What is this village? And why do ponies have the same cutie mark? To answer that question, the main six have to go deep in, into unknown territory. Now, however, some things aren't what they seem to be. Pinkie Pie was onto something when she said that things aren't right about this place. Was it the smile on the ponies? Was it their unique personality? Or was it something more sinister? Why were the ponies in the village acting strange, saying welcome on cue or having equal signs on their flanks? Either way, after some questions to the citizens, they found out the brains behind this scheme not long after. And cue Starlight Glimmer. Starlight Glimmer is your, just your standard run-of-the-mill unicorn pony doing her thing. Just like Mimi who runs Ponyville. Starlight has a similar role, but only this one involves some dirty deeds. Done dirt cheap. Sure, she may sound like someone you would see on the street on a daily basis, but beyond the surface, there's something sinister about her operations. Why would they? Why would she take her cutie marks away and replace them with equal signs? The first song number was also performed by Starlight, and let's say this, but this one really got people very interested in the character very early. I'm enchanted by Starlight singing. Wait, what? Scratching the surface. So after a song and dance routine, the main six sample some of the local food and... Oh dear. What is this all about? Um, I think Derpy may be heartbroken over those muffins. 
We first get a sample of the local cuisine, and the muffins are, well, not exactly what you find back in Ponyville. They aren't fancy and dressed up as Pinky would make it. They're bland and without any flavour at all. In fact, Pinkie Pie was prepared to put her stomach on the line again and sample some of them. Unfortunately, just like the last time she tried a muffin bacon that style thanks to Applejack's baked bads. Now this brings me to the question. I wonder if Pinkie has private health insurance. Because going through not one, but two batches of baked bads in a couple of years can result in some major cost to her allowance after you factor in the ambulance trip worth a hundred bits and the hospital stay running to the thousands of bits if she chose to stay in a private room. Now anyway, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, so let's just keep going. So after the muffins were consumed and Pinky was ill as heck, then we, are, then we are then treated to the scene which almost made me lose my dinner, which in fact was a good Chinese meal. The main six end up in the Cutie Mark Vault, a place where Starlight stores the ponies Cutie Marks after the unmarking process is conducted. The Cutie Unmarking, or, where, or the scene where I almost lost my dinner. A Cutie Marking? Is Starlight Glimmer a pony on a mission to rid a quester of being unique? So what is exactly a cutie unmarking, you say? Well, it's a process that involves Starlight using a magical scepter to remove the cutie mark off a pony and replace it with an equal sign, effectively robbing that pony of their special talent. So why did this one scene make me sick? Now, while I can... No while I don't normally say things like that and it's mentioned at the start of this post, I can handle almost any scene in any movie or TV show with the exception of horror films and references to sensitive issues such as the s word, which cannot be mentioned here. I can't watch this scene! <clears throat> now, while I could have handled most of the stuff that went down in the earlier seasons, the cutie unmarking scene actually made me sick. No joke. I felt my stomach clench up, and I almost threw up. I actually came close to losing my dinner a few times during that scene. In fact, I couldn't even watch the scene at all due to my PTSD and anxiety getting in the way, and I had to turn away from the monitor. I only had the order of the episode to rely on, and that didn't even stop me from almost losing it. I never felt that way before when I watched the show, and I'm still wondering why it happened. Um... I'm feeling a little sick after that cutie unmarking scene. In Starlight's Trap. Oh, wow. I've never seen the main six this depressed. True and honest. Alright, are we all calm? Good, we got rid of the um queasy stuff, so let's get back to the main one. Now, after almost losing it... The main six are now under Starlight's scheme and pretty much defeated and resigned to the fact of being one of them for the rest of their lives. Now, they ponder and the wonder of their ways in trying to escape this place. But, with the removal of their cutie marks, they have also been robbed of their ideas as well. For example, Rarity couldn't handle this new life and briefly broke down in tears in front of Fluttershy at the sight of some substandard curtains and drapes. Oh, poor Rarity. Fluttershy couldn't communicate with her animal friends. In fact, she couldn't even make sense of the tweets. Rainbow Dash lost all hope and couldn't break their way out. Applejack lost her country accent and strength. Pinkie Pie went all pink amina. And Twilight Sparkle, the element of magic, couldn't even think of an idea to escape. So, were the main six doomed to a life of ordinary practices until they passed on? Would this be the end of them? Will we see an entire season so dark that, heck, people could be turned off the show instantly? Heck no! They are the main six after all. They've defeated Discord, put Sombra in his place, put t rex in his place, and countless other things. So, with a little spark of hope, they formulate a plan to get out and return home. Miscellaneous, or the scenes that need to be covered quickly. 
I'm starting to get a little crook again. So I'll cover the rest of my thoughts on the episode in a quick, lightning fast manner. So after Fluttershy joins the village and turns the back on the main six, they hatch a plan to get their cutie mugs back, only to find that Starlight has taken them and they aren't in the vault. Cue some rebel ponies who end up bucking tradition and turn their back on Starlight. And then Starlight ends up being exposed for not being equal. So much for running a village in that sort of style and you not taking part. Then we cue to an Apple commercial with a reference to its 1984 Super Bowl ad. And a chase scene which sees Starlight goes deep into the wilderness never to be seen again. And yes, everyone gets their cutie marks back at the end of it all. So in conclusion, wow, what a ride. That season opener was an intense one. A great start to the new series. Now after all of this and almost losing my dinner, this episode for me was a mixed bag. While I enjoyed the episode and the story, I couldn't even think of going for a second through with a second screening. Now don't get me wrong, I was really getting into the episode until that scene happened, but I've got to give credit to the show staff for actually going in that direction. I actually made a point about that on one of my tweets during the live screening. This episode is dark, and I don't mean dark in the form of night, but this episode and this series has taken a new direction. Overall, I enjoyed the while I enjoyed the episode. I won't be seeing this one again anytime soon with the exception of some scenes which don't make me sick. Now let's hope the rest of the season is going to be a good one. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to have some Easter eggs and a dream money to escape this mess.